Hello and welcome to another Board Crazy Review. My name is D, and today I'll be reviewing Dream Runners with... Um, well, with, 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 with Will. Yeah? Will, 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 Will. Yeah? You okay? Yeah. You all right? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, you sleepy? I had a series of strokes today. Uh, oh, yeah. geez, okay. That's, uh, that's a little dark. Oh, it happens. Hmm. No, I did an audience. I'm healthy. Well... Uh, right, but before we actually get talking about the game, mm -hmm. um, which is what people are here for, uh, we're going to run my introduction to it from our gameplay video, so that if they haven't watched us play it yet, they'll have at least an understanding of how the game works. Right, Bill? Correct, D. All yeah. right. Here that goes. Dream Runners is a game for two to four players, designed by Joan Dufour and published by Ankama. In this game, players are essentially competing to see who can have the most restful sleep by fending off nightmares and collecting dream points. When setting up, a dream pile must be assembled. First, two level four dream tiles are chosen at random and placed at the bottom of the pile. After that, two level three dreams are chosen and placed on top, and then two level two dreams, and then finally two level one dreams. Each player, meanwhile, selects a color and takes the corresponding Serenity Board, Segment Tiles, and Scoring Tokens, as well as two coins. One Scoring Token goes on their own Serenity Track, while the other goes on the start of the Star Track on the main board. Also on the main board goes the Chest Tokens, which are separated by type, and the Segment Tiles, which are separated by shape. The game is played over eight rounds, with one dream per round. At the start of each round, the top dream from the pile is flipped over. Then players must compose their segment tiles to best match the contents of the dream, ideally in a 3x3 three three square. The first player to finish their composition becomes the first dreamer for the round, collects one coin, and flips over the sand timer. Once the timer runs out, the other players then must stop working on their compositions and they are resolved. There are three effects when resolving compositions, and they can be done in any order. One effect is Dream Coherence. For each cell missing from or outside of a 3x3 square in a player's composition, they must move down one space on their Serenity track. Serenity is also lost for each nightmare on the Dream that was not banished by a corresponding banishing symbol. Finally, rewards are earned from cells on which a player has applied the Collect effect. Rewards include Coins, Serenity, keys for opening chests, and star fragments, which can be spent to move up one space on the star track. After the compositions have been resolved, players may then spend the coins they've earned to make improvements. One at a time in clockwise order, players may spend four coins to acquire a single face-up segment tile from the main board, and or three coins as many times as they'd like to move up one space on their serenity track. After this, the round stream uh, tile is discarded, as well as any chests that might have been opened. Uh, a new dream tile is uh, revealed, and the new round begins. After the final round, players add up their dream points. These are earned from their positions on both the star track and their own serenity track, as well as from any dream point symbols on the segment tiles that they still have in their possession. Naturally, the player who has collected the most dream points wins the game. Now let's get started. All right. Yep. Yeah. I'm real aggressive today. I don't know. I guess so. I'm either, Calm down, I'm either indecisive or really aggressive. Yeah. So, uh, so Dream Runners. Indeed. <laughs> I think before we start talking about uh, the things we like and don't like, I think it's appropriate to set expectations first. Uh, I think it would be uh, fair to say that this is a uh, fall under the vein of a gateway game. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not particularly complicated. Or no. Anything. No. It's pretty. It's pretty easy to teach. Pretty easy to learn. It's not, however, I wouldn't say it's necessarily short enough to really work as like a, a filler game. It's also a little heavy on components for that. So I, yeah, yeah, I would say this is a game that is going to work best for probably appeal most to younger or newer board gamers. And this is the sort of game I'd probably want to play maybe like uh, two or three times at once in one session. So uh, now that that's established, uh, we can talk about the things we like and the things we uh, don't like as much. Um, so obviously the tile laying is a big part of this game. It is sort of the main thing you do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it works pretty well. You know, it's not overly complex, of course. 
you're, you know, it's not like, you know, you're just trying to make a, pretty much trying to make a three by three square with the tiles you've got. Uh, you yeah, know. and you're not restricted to that. I mean, no. you could, you know, create a different shape, but yeah. you're going to lose points. You will so, yes. lose points if you do that. But, you know, it's, it's generally not like a, a ton of, uh, of like, uh, geometric thinking you have to do uh, for mm -hmm. the most part, but I do think it, it still works uh, because of the sort of like the, the tandem strategizing you have to do between banishing nightmares and also trying to uh, collect the rewards you want. Plus the fact that you are sort of a little bit on the clock competing against your opponents to try and uh, ideally finish quickly. So actually, that's clutch. Because yeah, <laughs> the game would be super easy if yeah. it was all shapes like, you know, three by three, you know, three by, you know, by one, I guess you could say. That, you know, if they yeah, were all straight line is. shapes mm -hmm. that you had, it would be easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but you also have elbow pieces. So you do kind of have to Tetris it a bit, but you're right. You want to, like, well, here's a good example. If you want to banish things, you need these, like, mm -hmm. you know, pink symbols. So... It, it's less about making the shape. It's it's always about making a three by three. The challenge is in how do you make the best three by three that gets everything exactly where you want it. And that's kind of what you already said. But yeah, yeah. it's real satisfying. Do you like it though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I would agree. I think when it comes together for you, it's it's pretty satisfying. Yes. Um. Well. How, okay. The timer. Mm -hmm. I think this game does the time uses the timer better than most games that use timers. Uh, which is to say, I don't usually like sand timers when they're incorporated because, well, they can be kind of messy. Um, but in this game, it only comes into play once a player has decided that they're finished yeah. as, uh, assembling their, their dream or what have you. Um, so they collect it, they flip it over, and then, you know, you always have at least then that one person to keep an eye on it. Uh, Which is smart. Yeah, so that you know exactly when it is actually, the round is actually over. Yeah, uh, a lot of games I feel like that have a sand timer. You know, it's kind of like something you just kind of have to kind of keep an eye on in, in addition to what you, the work you're doing. Because, but then you know, the situations where like you know everyone like forgets about it and you look up like, oh, okay, what was done illegally? We have no idea. You know, yeah, it is smart in this game. I think it's the best way to use it because mm -hmm. you're right. There is that one person who can be like, oh, you only got you know so much time left. I do think, though, that because it's a sand timer, that person can't really tell anyone. Like, can't, you can't really be like, you got five seconds. Well, you can't be specific. You no. can kind of be, let them know, like, it's getting close. And I do think way. it goes a little too quick. That would be my main complaint. It's not a long one, but I don't mind it. I feel, I, I like that kind of before it enters play, you, you theoretically have as much time as you want. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as everyone else is also thinking a lot. You know, you aren't necessarily uh, forced to rush off, off the get-go. It's only when that comes into play that you actually have to start... Uh, making fast decisions. Um, and one other thing I, I definitely like about the game, even though there's nothing revolutionary about it from like a mechanical standpoint or anything, but I, I enjoy the chests and, and the keys. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's 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 kind of neat because, you know, like the, the keys are, are not an immediate reward. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, it's kind of re requires some patience to kind of go after those and then also go after chests when you've got enough keys to do it. But I, I, I just enjoy what they add to the game. You know, there's a bit of suspense whenever you can open one because you don't know exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be like the thing you need or or not. Usually, it's always yeah. going to be helpful. But Yeah, it was a smart choice because, yeah, you don't know what you're going to get. And also, it's just a different currency that you have to think about. And you, you know, more strategy. You have to figure out what you want to prioritize. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people will go out of their way to get keys just because they want to see what's behind door number one. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So yeah, they are cool. they are again they are they are more valuable than just say a, a a single space typically would be. Yeah, and also the star fragments. You know, you like the keys. I actually I think I preferred the star fragments because I like well, the sort cool. of game within a game where mm -hmm. you're trying to make a little. It's simple, where you know every time you collect uh, one of the of the four color one of each of the four colors, mm -hmm. you move up a separate track. To get more and more, uh, you know, uh, serenity, which is really victory points, yeah. just a name for victory points. Mm -hmm. um, they're just nice. Again, I think the, I think the decisions made to spice the gameplay up were smart because they didn't re really make the game any more complicated. They just added components. Yeah. But I didn't really feel that any of it was superfluous. I never, I didn't walk away feeling like, oh, that mechanic didn't need to be in there. If anything, I thought that if it wasn't in there, I think that the game would have been too easy, too simple. Yeah. Um, I do have some criticisms of the game, though. 
I know you do too. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll start uh, with what I thought was maybe the most uh, apparent one off the bat okay. in our time with this game is I feel like the game can have a, a runaway leader problem. At least in my experience so far, I think it's easier to lose a bunch of points at once than it is to gain them. You know, yeah. if, you, if you really mess up, uh, yes, you can kind of plummet uh, your serenity. So it becomes a it's kind of this awkward scenario then once where someone if someone does get a pretty sizable lead, or even like a like a a, a, a decent lead. Yeah, just the smallest of gaps it, can become. It really feels almost impossible to to make up that difference. You you because you're relying on that point on them actually messing up, uh, rather than yourself playing well. Because even if you're playing perfectly, you know they can kind of just play somewhat conservatively mm -hmm. and more or less assure the victory. The I'll overlay it. You mm -hmm. start with twenty serenity or twenty victory points, mm -hmm. but the way they gridded it out, it's like. It's not 20, 19, 18. It's 20, no. then 20, then 15, then 15, then 15, then 12. And by doing that, I think if it was just one point at a time, it, it, I mean, think about how precipitous a drop it can be. It, you, can go from, you could go from 20 down to 12. That's, you know, eight victory points. But all you have to do is lose um, one, two, three, four points to do that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, if you lose four serenity, you're actually losing eight victory points. So there's not, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Well, also, if someone, say, maybe moves up three spaces mm -hmm. and another person moves down three spaces, it's not then 23 to 17. It's yeah. 25 to 15. Yeah. And I think part of what compounds the problem is that I'm not totally uh, con like convinced by the, the overall scoring system in the game. Mm -hmm. It feels... I don't know how to really, like, articulate it perfectly. It just feels kind of rigid um, to me in that, like, like I said, like, yeah, it... it there, maybe there aren't enough ways to score yeah. in order to make up the difference. Like, even on here, you know, you're, you're moving up by, you know, intervals. Yeah. Um, there's not, like, any, like, competition over resources. It's not like someone will claim a tile on here and block the other person from doing it. You know, it's... People are... Everything is always fair game to everyone. So, mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can't, like, make up the difference that way by preventing someone from doing something. They can do the exact same thing as you, so everyone can keep getting the same... Uh, exactly. fragments and keep moving up and yeah that i don't know it just it unfortunately the the actual scoring just doesn't really seem to to work all that well in my mind mm -hmm. the only the only other way to score is by collecting uh tiles that have uh, serenity icons on it for end of the game but they're yeah. so they're not i mean they're you're not gonna get that many even if no. you focus on them specifically you might end up with maybe 10 yeah if you're if you're if you're really lucky but i mean that's i mean that could could be the difference but through hearing your complaint, I'm able to say that actually I think my main complaint about the game is sort of that the gameplay itself, as it's written in the rules, encourages you to play it safe. Mm. Like, the you're right. Like, if you go outside the bounds of a 3x3 three three grid, you're going to lose a lot of points for every, you know, blank space or extra, you know, mm -hmm. piece of tile you have hanging off that grid. Um... So it just makes more sense to do the best you can by staying at a three by three, so you're not losing those extra points. As it's, and then the same thing like with star fragments, you just have to collect one of each color, and every time you do that, you move up. So, like, why ever, why ever do something that different from what the game is telling you to do? Yeah. Why, like, it'd be cool with star fragments if if it was like four of the same color or four of the different colors, or you know, like. Like, maybe the first one is you collect all four. The second one is you collect two white and two orange. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so that it just encourages you to take a different strategy. So when you're building your dream, you're, you know, you're building a different grid mm -hmm. and you're doing different things. You know, when it's a game called Dream Runners and a game this colorful and it kind of puts into your head this idea of dreaming and, and abstractness, for, for something like that, and the artwork matches that theme, mm -hmm. but the gameplay, you're right, it's just... It's too too rigid. It's too, you know, right down the middle, and it's not. It doesn't feel unpredictable like a dream would be. No. Uh, the theme is, uh, I mean, there's no other way to put it other than you know, it is a, the definition of tacked on. Um, yeah, I mean, it's gameplay. It's here because they needed a the theme. It yeah. feels like uh, it really doesn't do anything to tie into this dreamlike idea that you had kind of alluded to earlier. If you had to build like. I was sort of disappointed it was always, mm -hmm. the dreams were always three by three, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, again, you can go outside those 
those limits, but it maybe would have felt more like a like a dream if every shape was different. And I don't know if they found a way for it to like you. It, it is sort of just you know I don't know. It's not necessarily what you call this an abstract game. It could be. I yeah. think very easily. I don't know if it. I don't know if I. I'm not sure if it is in its current form, but yeah. I, could, I could easily see you stripping away everything except from just, for just like colors. Yeah, and then you you can still probably play this. Uh, which is a shame. I mean, that's, it does have a lot of. I, th I think it looks very nice. I think the art's yes. really good. I think the components are all really good. Uh, you know, the stuff. It's the stuff that you don't really have to care about yeah, I mean, all that much. Like the back sides of the dreams look really nice. It's the the front sides are. You know, it's, it's a game all yeah. of a sudden. It's a very colorful, attractive game. Yeah. I just wish that all of the. It just sometimes feels like all the colors and the art is just there to distract you from the fact that. The gameplay doesn't really integrate with the theme no, at all. Yeah, it really doesn't. It's, uh, yeah. So again, that, 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 another reason why it might appeal more to like younger players mm -hmm. uh, or, or newer players. You know, at least it does look very nice. Yeah. Also, a great insert. Yeah, it's a terrific. Insert. Very good. Yeah. Everything fits nicely. All the little bits are covered up by bigger bits. A plus. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, should we wrap it up? Indeed. Like we've gone for a little, a little long uh, on this one. Um. So overall, I think this is a a, a solid um, gateway game. I think if you're a more experienced player, I, I'm not sure this game is going to have uh, enough on offer for your time or money to really make that uh, investment worth it. Uh, it is pretty simple to learn. It does play in a reasonable time. It does look very nice, and I think there, you know, it's not. It's it, there are moments uh, that are, are pretty fun mm -hmm. um, when you know. When you're when you're playing it, but yeah, a lot of the issue is I think to do with, um, I think when you get into like the scoring and everything in terms of it actually feeling like a fun competitive board game, it, it kind of starts to falter a little bit. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna give it a uh, three stars out of five. Yeah, it's one of those games that I felt like in the moment I really I really enjoy it. Um, you know, I I'm not even a I'm not like, the biggest fan of. Mm -hmm like tile placement matching puzzle kind of they're never like the games i'm going to excel at but i appreciate that this one at least left the timer part for mm. you know later on in the round uh but yeah the it's one of those games where the more i think about it after i'm done playing the the less i'm like super like pumped to play it again because yeah. i do think with the rigid rule set and the sort of like you said sort of the um lackluster scoring system it just it again it encourages you i think it really encourages players to play safe and because of that it doesn't really stand out long term in my mind mm -hmm. um and for that reason i'm going to give it a i'm going to give it a c plus c plus yeah. all right so there you have it those are our thoughts on dream runners thank you for watching this video if you've stuck around this whole time uh, if you enjoyed the video please give us a thumbs up always appreciate that if you have any comments of course leave those down below uh, you can also subscribe to the channel uh, for more uh, reviews like this. And uh, come back next time for our next gameplay. Oh, yes, I know what it is. Yeah, we'll be... Uh, We're heading back to WW2. Yep. <laughs> Once again, not undaunted, though. New game. Yes. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, until then, thank you again for watching. Bye. See you next time.